Good morning one and all. I am Harshna, a teaching cum research faculty at NSUT Dwarka. Before starting with the presentation, I would like to thank Dr. Raj, the workshop chief advisor, and Mr. Sonu, the workshop coordinator, for giving me this opportunity and platform to share my knowledge with all of you. I have been working on LaTeX since 2017 and it has been a great learning experience. It is a very simple software and can be used to write articles, reports, books and even make flyers. But most importantly, it can be used to write complicated mathematical equations. We all know how time consuming writing a complicated mathematical expression in MS Word can be. And that's when LaTeX comes to our rescue. No matter how difficult the equation is, no matter how lengthy it is, if we know LaTeX, we can easily write it. So today I will be talking about how to write mathematical equations in LaTeX. I will be talking about the different modes of writing mathematical equation and the mathematical symbols. How to write different mathematical symbols. Uh, I will be using text studio, but we will run the same commands in Overleaf as well. Now in text studio, whenever we need to, whenever we want to write mathematical equations, we need to have a mathematical, uh, we need to create a mathematical environment. If we do not create a mathematical environment, it will show error and we won't get the output. So starting with Tech Studio, I take a new sheet and the best way to add any packages go to Wizards, Quick Start and in document class you have all the options. If you want to write an article, you can choose an article. If you want to write a report, you can choose a report. We have letter also how to write a book. It will give you the package. Beamer is for presentation and leaflet is for making a flyer. Let's go with article. Now main package for writing a mathematical expression is AMS math and it is already included. So we do not need to write it. Now beginning with the document. Now. Uh, we have two writing modes for mathematical expressions. We have the inline mode and the display mode. So talking about the inline mode first, we use it when the formula or equation is a part of the text and not a separate entity. So let's start with inline mode. This is my heading. Now this two backslash are a command for new line. Whatever I write next will be in a new line. So let's say I want to write in physics the mass energy equivalence is given by now in inline mode uh, the first way of writing is I write the I write the mathematical equation between two dollar signs. So E is equals to MC square and this cap in the middle is for power, power of C. I run it and so this is my output. My mathematical expression is along with the sentence. Now this is one way of writing and it is in other line because of these two backslash. Whenever I want something in a new line, I will do put backslash. Now the best part about LaTeX is it gives, it tells you where you're going wrong. It gives you a hint and a very big hint. Like if I remove these dollar signs and I run and compile my document, it is giving me an error and it's giving me a big hint that a missing dollar sign a dollar sign is missing and in line 8. So whenever I'm writing any mathematical equation, I need to include it between two dollar signs. 
and now it is running and i got the output now this is one way of writing in inline mode the second way is The second way of writing in inline mode is I enclose it in curly brackets. So E is equals to MC square. I will get the same output as the first one. I'm getting the exactly same output output and from two different uh, commands. Now there is another way of writing in inline mode and it is If I enclose my mathematical equation between begin map and end map. Now, whenever I begin something, I have to end it as well. If I don't, it will show an error. So, I need to enclose it between these two. So, after if I write and I run and compile the document i will get the same output so in inline mode i have three methods and i have three commands and by all the three commands i'm getting the same output i can either put dollar sign i can enclose my mathematical expression between dollar signs or between round brackets or between begin math and end math now after the inline mode comes the display mode let me put two backslash here so after the inline mode comes the display mode now in display mode if i want my mathematical expression my formula to be in a new line i want it to be highlighted to be in a new line so what i'm going to do is Again, we have three different methods of writing in display mode. And instead of one dollar, I will enclose it between two dollars, four dollar signs. So two in the front and two at the back. Now by doing this, I will get the output in a new line. See, it is in a new line. So that's our output in display mode there is another method now we used round brackets in the first one in inline mode here we will use square brackets so i will write e is equals to mc square here and i will run and compile my file and i am getting the exact same result as the first one wherein I enclose my mathematical equation between two dollar signs. Now, there is another method and it is very useful also. It is, if I enclose my mathematical expression between begin equation and end equation, now it has an advantage you will know once I run the command and the advantage is that along with it being in a new line it is numbered as well so that's the beauty of begin equation of writing an uh, of writing an equation between begin equation and end equation but it has a disadvantage as well and that is that I cannot write more than one equation between begin equation and end equation. For example, if I write, if I try writing another equation, let's say a plus b is equals to c. So we can see what's happening they are coming together even though i put two backslash to put them in a new line so we cannot write more than one equation in between begin equation and end equation now if i do not want my equation to be numbered all i have to do is put an asterisk after equation so 
let's do that and see what we get So now my equation is not numbered because I put an asterisk after equation. So we can either use the inline mode or display mode for writing simple equations. So you know when we can use begin equation and end equation when there is only one equation. But what if there are more than one equation? There are two or three or maybe five equations. What to do then? So for that purpose, we have another command and that is begin align and end align so i can write as many equations as i want between begin align and end align so let's say let's write a couple of equations Let's say I write, I'm writing just simple equations. It's only to show how to work on, how to work with begin align and end align. So let's see what we get. So we get three equations and all the three equations are numbered. Now that's begin align and end align for you. It is very helpful if we, we can write as many equations as we want between begin align and end align. And again, just like in equation, if we do not want our equations to be numbered, all I have to do is put an asterisk after align. So I put an asterisk and we see our equations are not numbered. But what if I want one of the equations to be numbered and the other to not be numbered? So let's say I don't want my first equation E is equals to mc square to be numbered. I don't want it to be numbered. So all I have to do is write backslash no number in front of the equation. Now my first equation won't be numbered but my other two will be. So begin begin align and end align is very useful my first equation is not numbered and my other two are so if you do not want your equations to be numbered all you have to do is write backslash no number in front of the equation you don't want to be numbered now if you see these three equations they are not vertically aligned that is the equal to sign is not one above the other now in that case what we need to do is we need to add an ampersand sign in front of equal to. So we add an ampersand sign in front of equal to and let's see what we get now. Now they will be vertically aligned and yes we can see these are vertically aligned. The equal to sign is one above the other. So that's the beauty of this command. It is very useful and can be used to write as many equations as we want. Uh, we can align them vertically we can uh, we can number them if we don't want anything to be numbered all we have to do is just write backslash no number uh, so we saw how to write equation along a line how to write an equation in a new line how to number it how to write a couple of equations how to number them so moving forward so uh, let's just so moving forward uh, first we will see how to write fractions and square root and in subscript and superscript so we can work on complicated functions and we will see how to write greek symbols rho phi gamma beta and all of those so first of all let's see how to write a fraction so again, since we are talking about fraction and since fraction is a mathematical expression, we need to include it between two dollar signs. So all I have to write is write backslash rack. Now my first term will come in these curly braces, let's say AB and my, my denominator will come in the second one. 
so in first one ab in first curly braces my numerator will come and in the second curly braces my denominator will come let's run and see the output oh i'm sorry i wrote it between a line in uh, between beginner line and end line you do not need to write you do not need to use dollar sign so if i remove these let's run and see what we get now yeah so we are getting ab by cd so between beginner line and end line we do not need to use uh, dollar sign because we are already it's an equation and we are already uh, Typing mathematical terms, but if it's outside begin equation, end equation, and begin line, end line, then we need to use dollar signs. Between a text, we need to use dollar sign because between a text, we are adding a mathematical expression. So to show to um, write a mathematical expression, we need to insert it between two dollar sign. So we saw how to write fraction. Now to write uh, subscript. Again, since I am not between equation or between beginner line and end line, I will insert it between two dollar signs. So, how to write a subscript x? And for subscript, we use underscore a. Instead of a, you can write whatever you want. So yeah, so we've got the output. It is x a. Now for superscript, what we do is again between two dollar signs. X to the power a. I already told you the cap is for power, and I have x to the power a. Now, if I want both of them together, like x subscript a to the power b, all I have to do is write x under root underscore a and to the power b. This is all you. This is all we need to do. So yes, this is my output. So that's how I how, that's how we write superscript and subscript. Now to write square root, all we have to do is write again between two dollar signs backslash s q r t, and you write whatever you want to write. Say a. So let's see what we get. Yeah, so we got under root a. So that's how we work with these functions. Now. To integrate, all we have to do is again write between dollar signs everything. Because I am not between any begin equation, end equation, and begin line or end line, I need to use these dollar signs. Had I been writing between begin equation and end equation, I would not be using the dollar sign. But since I am writing it in a text, I need to. Now for integration, all you have to do is backslash int and under root underscore. Now underscore is for your lower limit. So whatever you want your lower limit to be, say x is equals to zero, and to the power my upper limit. So let's say it's pi. So again pi since it's a mathematical symbol, we need to write backslash pi. And say our function is x dx. So let's compile and see. Yeah, so we got the desired result: integration x from zero to pi x dx. Now this integration, if you want double integration, I will write in twice. If I want triple, I will write it thrice. So let's write it here only: backslash in. Don't forget to write backslash. So now I have two. If I want another, or also here it gives you the options. I have your x minimum. Minimum is the lower limit. Maximum is the upper limit. So all I have to do is write my lower limit here. So let's say x from zero to x from anything, say hundred. So these are not the actual limits, but yeah, I'm just giving you an example. Similarly, if you want a triple integral, we will write backslash int again. So that's how we use the integration command. Now, if I want a sum of any number, so all I have to do is backslash sum. 
lower limit whatever you want it to be x is equals to say 0 and 2 my upper limit say 100 and my function is f of x let's see what i get so i got the desired result and that's how we use sum now if i want to find out the limit of any function all i have to do is write backslash lim sorry lim backslash lim and then again now in limit now it is x backslash 2a now this 2 is x is tending to a this is what this backslash to is so say my function is f of x let's compile and see what we get so we've got the desired result x limit x tending to a f of x so this 2 is for the limit x tending to a so we've seen how to write in subscript superscript under root integer sum limit so we've seen this these all let's see some how to write some greek symbols and after that we will try writing some complicated functions so this is how we write greek symbols now this pdf will be shared with you guys it is very useful and it has a lot of information in it all we have to do is write backslash and the name of the function so backslash alpha backslash beta backslash sine cos now again since all of these are mathematical symbols we need to include them between two uh, dollar signs so let's try writing these so let's write i have to include them between dollar signs let's say i write alpha plus beta is equals to backslash gamma now since uh, latex is case sensitive so yes i've got alpha plus beta is equals to gamma uh, latex is case sensitive so i need to take care of uh, capital and small uh, uh, lead alphabets uh, this g is small so i get a small gamma here if this G was capital, I would be getting, let's try, I would be getting this gamma here, the big gamma. So, LaTeX is case sensitive, we need to be very careful while writing. Also, if I do not put these, I do not enclose it between two dollar signs, Again, it is showing an error. It says in line number 29, uh, dollar sign is missing. So we need to insert it. So LaTeX will always give you your error. And it's very easy to rectify. You will get to know where you're going wrong. It shows you the line also and gives you hint as to where you're going wrong. Now let's write some complicated functions using whatever we've learned till now. So let's write a chemical formula. Now again, since um, it is an expression, I will be including it between two dollar signs. So say I have to write SO4 2 minus plus BA2 plus gives me BASO4. So all I have to do is SO. Now since O4, 4 is in subscript, I will write underscore 4 and superscript is 2 plus so i will write 2 plus plus ba2 plus sorry this is 2 minus and b a and superscript is 2 plus so gives me so i will write backslash right arrow now backslash right arrow will give me an arrow pointing towards the right. If I say backslash left arrow, it will give me an arrow pointing towards the left. So it will give me B A S O 4. 
So let's see what we get now. We've got the desired result. So that's how we will write superscript and subscript. And for right arrow, we will write backslash right arrow. Now all these right arrows, left arrows, how to write uh, different functions, everything is in, is there in the PDF, which will be shared with you. Uh, now let's write another complicated mathematical expression. Let's say I have G, uh, I have to enclose it between two dollar signs. So G under root, now I have G, sorry, underscore G mu rho and mu rho are in subscript. So for mu, I will write backslash mu and for rho, I will write backslash rho. That's how mu and rho will be written is equal to R subscript mu rho. So again, backslash mu backslash rho minus half. Now for half, I will write backslash frac. In the first curly braces, I will write my numerator, which is one. And in second, I will write my denominator, which is two. Half into R G and again, subscript mu rho, so backslash mu backslash rho is equal to 8 pi g upon c to the power 4. Now 8 pi g upon c to the power 4, again I will be using fraction. Now my numerator is 8 pi g. So for pi I will write backslash pi into g and my denominator is c to the power 4. So c to the power 4 into t subscript mu rho. So let's see what we get. We've got the desired result. Uh, so we see how LaTeX makes our work so easy. Like this equation, it took me not even a minute to write this equation. So that's how easy LaTeX makes our work. Let's try writing a function with under root also. Then we will move on to bigger equations. So suppose I have x is equals to f naught upon k. So for f naught upon k, I will be using backslash frac. Now my numerator is f naught, which will be written like this. And k into 1 upon under root. So for 1 upon under root, I will again use frac and my numerator is this and my denominator will be under root. So backslash sqrt into 1 minus r square whole square. So 1 minus r square and whole square plus 2r rho. So 2r and for rho I will write backslash rho and whole square. Now my braces should be balanced. If they are not balanced, it will show an error. Now it's showing in yellow, which means my, my braces are balanced. If suppose I remove this, so this is showing a red. It says that it's starting with a brace but it's ending with a dollar sign, which is wrong. It won't compile, it will show an error. Yeah, so it says, file ended while scanning use of rack, which means it has not been used properly. So all I have to do is insert a bracket here, and we've got the desired result. So we need to take care of the braces. Uh, we need to take care whether uh, the, the alphabets we are writing are small or they are capital letters because it is case sensitive. So we need to be careful, but even if we go wrong, LaTeX will give you hints and we can rectify our problem. It's not that big a deal. It can be easily rectified. So we saw how to write these complicated equations. If we know uh, how to write 
subscript, superscript, fractions, under root, sum limit. We can easily write equations. Now, if we have some equation which is running on two, two lines, which is a very big equation, which has like um, quite a few terms. So, in that case, what we do is we use the environment backslash begin multi line. So, and since we are beginning, we have to end it as well. It is multi line, but it's written as mult line. Uh, so, suppose my expression is. I write all the alphabets. So wherever I want to break my line, I put two backslash. So say it's A. I am just randomly writing anything because we need to see how it works. And suppose after this, I want to break my line. I want the other terms to be in a new line. So all I have to do is put two backslash because they are for a new line. They are for new line command. We know that. And now I write the remaining term in the new line. And let's see what we get. Yeah. So that's and my equation is numbered as well. So that's how multi line works. But there is no alignment in this. Like in begin align, we saw that it was aligned. It is not like that in multi line. Uh, if your equation is too big, if it's taking more than one line, all you have to do is just uh, write your equation is multi line, and it will be. It will be numbered. If you do not want it to be numbered, all we have to do is put an asterisk after multiplying, just like how we did in equation and align. So that's all we will we need to do. And now our equation is not numbered. So we saw how to write. We can write very big equations. We are taking more than one line using backslash begin multi line now what if we have an equation suppose we have uh, i want to write cos 2 theta is equals to cos square theta minus sin square theta also cos 2 theta is equals to 2 cos square theta minus 1 that is i want to split my equation like we do in a solution that fx is equals to x square minus 1 which is is equals to x minus 1 into x plus 1 now in that case we will use, a, of course, since we are writing an equation, we will begin with begin equation and end equation. And I want to split my equation. So I will write begin, split. And since I'm beginning something, I have to end it as well because I want to split my equation. So I will write this. Now I want to write cos to theta I want it to be aligned so I will use ampersand sign in front of equal to which will be cos square theta minus backslash sign square theta uh, we have to keep in mind backslash before writing the mathematical expressions so and equal to Two cos square theta minus one. So let's compile and see what we get. We get the desired result. It is vertically aligned and I it is numbered also. So that's how we use split. So we saw how to write an inline mode, how to write an expression along with a text. We saw how to write in display mode if you want it to be in a different line. Uh, we saw how to write two or more than two equations using a line and how to number them 
by using no number if we do not want to number any equation then we saw how to write uh, under root and integration sum limit how to write greek symbols how to write complicated uh, expressions then we saw how to write an equation if it's taking more than one line we just need to break it using multi line and uh, we used split begin split and end split to split an equation and it is numbered so now if we don't want our equation to be numbered all i have to do is again put an asterisk after equation so now my equation is not numbered um so now we will try to run the same commands in overleaf as well so now in overleaf all we have to do is go on new project i take any blank project now see the templates are already available if you want to write a book all you have to do is choose a book academic journal even if you want to uh, make a resume so you will not have to add any package the packages will be in build you can all you have to do is just uh, use this package you do not need to add anything so that way overleaf is very helpful i'm taking a blank project let me name it as a uh, report and now uh, overleaf uh needs internet connectivity so that you need to take care of now since again the packages are in built i do not need to use ams math package it has that package already and it's giving me the report format as well i do not need to write anything in it if i was writing the same thing in latex in text studio i would be giving i would be giving all these commands of title author and make title but here it's inbuilt it's already there so we do not need to do that thing it makes our work so much simpler and easier uh, let's just try and run the command which we let's run this itself so the commands will be the same whatever we so whatever we wrote in uh, okay so it's showing some error in red let's see what it is okay so it says requirement uh, environment is not defined okay so so we can see it's showing error so let's see now here it gives us hint it's telling us what where all we went wrong so we can take help from latex let's try making a few changes even though it's perfectly fine to me okay now it is not taking this double backslash so it sometimes so happens that we need to uh, close the tab and open it again then it the command runs because we've already seen that the same command was running in text studio so it should run here also let's take help from latex so in help we will see on documentation and here overleaf gives us a brief overview of everything it even says that learn latex in 30 minutes because they have guides they have everything on mathematics also so if you are having problem in anything we can take help from here uh, we have mathematical forms integral sum limits aligning functions matrices mathematical expressions even drawing tables how to draw tables we can see from here so and documentation documentation structure everything is there 
uh, in here in overleaf for our help so let's go to mathematics in the mathematics section and let's see where we went wrong so we go to mathematics and it has everything here whatever we want we can see so let's go to aligning equations and let's see where we went wrong so we have splitting and aligning an equation and they've used multiplying also so it gives you it tells you everything it so here okay so here we can see we've used exactly the same command but it's showing error so basically there is some issue if we turn it off and start again it will give us the result so that's about it whatever equations we run in text studio will definitely run in latex uh, in uh, overleaf as well we've seen the example also this is the same equation this is what we wrote so overleaf is very useful and it is very helpful it gives us uh, we can see how many different things are there we can get to learn so many new things and with this i would like to uh, end my talk uh, i hope it was benefiting for all of you thank you so much for taking out time and listening to me uh, i would like to thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity thank you